Okay, hello, Pastor Ken here with um, cast number two. Again, cast comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. That's um, interesting. And sometimes we don't feel like he cares. Sometimes we feel like God is indifferent or God is distant or God is dead. God is on vacation. Uh, God is uh, unable. God doesn't know. Um... None of those things really square up with what the Bible teaches, but that doesn't mean we, we don't feel like he's indifferent or gone. You know, the indifferent thing, back to, uh, remember the time the disciples were on the well, Sea of Galilee, and it's, it's a terrible storm. Jesus, you know, somewhat indifferent because he's asleep in the boat. And they are, yikes, they're just, nah. They're on the verge of perishing, so they think. They awaken Jesus and he says, Peace, be still. It's still. And now they're even more terrified because who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? But it felt to them like Jesus was either indifferent or he was unable or he was distracted or he was too weak, he had to rest or whatever. So sometimes we get in those modes, don't we? Um, you know, and, and we're talking about. The issues that can beset us over a long haul, you know, the, the, the whole issue of sex or anger or the D's, uh, you know, divorce or death or um, uh, drugs or demons or um, divorce. Those things uh, can just be daunting and haunting for long periods of time. Uh, the last two are money, uh, gambling and um, debt or greed and coveting. I mean, just being so consumed with greed, just being so consumed with, you gotta have a new car, you gotta have a bigger house, you gotta have a new 70 inch TV or whatever it is. You know, you're, you're consumed by things that are materialism kind of things. That's a, M is materialism or money. And E is eating. Uh, you know, you, you, you've just got, you're addicted to ice cream. My goodness, is that? Can that be bad? Yeah, it can be, but man, I love ice cream. Okay, so the point is, you know, we, we all battle these things, but sometimes these things capture us. Uh, he talks about that in, in different places. Beware, be wise, lest you be taken captive by these things. You know, Second, Second Corinthians chapter 10 or um, uh, Colossians chapter 2, other ones. Okay, so casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. So that's the idea of the cast. You know, I, I make this into an acronym in the sense that Christ alone solves troubles. We can put band-aids on it. We can do cover-ups. We can run uh, into uh, multiple meetings. Or we can run into work. Or we can run into uh, a play to try to cover up our pain, mask our pain. But that doesn't take care of it, does it? Uh, Christ alone solves troubles. So cast all your care on him for he cares for you. So part of that casting is, you know, that I'm going to cast a vision for you. I'm going to cast a vision for a, of a bigger God, of a great God, of a, a, a good God who can help you. I want to cast um, an anchor. You're tossed to and fro by every wind of, 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 of anger and emotion and all that. I want to cast an anchor for you. Um, I want to cast um, a, a line to you, a line of rescue, you know, to... Pull out a life, throw out a life preserver, and pull you in. So this whole idea of cast, uh, casting um, our cares and a cast to help you. Um, again, that my argument here is that there is a God and that God does care. God does understand. God does deal. Uh, the, the problem we got often is in, in this is that He's not. He doesn't deal in our time or in our way. Um, you know, we, I, I, want, I want fix now, I want fix now. Uh, I want you to fix what happened yesterday. And, and oftentimes God says, you know, he reminds us in, in Isaiah 55, he says, my ways are not your ways. His timing. So you think about the, 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 you know, the whole Old Testament pointing toward Jesus. And for 400 years from, from Malachi, the last prophet, until God speaks again to Zacharias, the high priest, a member of the, the father of John the Baptist, 400 years. 400 years of silence. Wow. Come on, God. I mean, yeah, we need help here, and you promised it. And so even our, our lesson last time was with uh, Abraham, and God had promised Abraham a seed and great nations, many nations. 
And, uh, you know, it was 25 years before he got a son. But he got a son. And it did happen exactly as God said. So again, part of our, our, our issue with God is timing. And part of our issue is even the way. When we pray for healing, well, you know, sometimes God doesn't heal us physically. Sometimes God heals us mentally. God heals our mind so that, you know, we, we, we've got a disability or something. God heals us so that we now have, can, can find contentment. We can find purpose in that disability. Um, sometimes it is um, God gives us um, an emotional healing or even a, a hope. So in our, you know, when we have a thorn, remember Paul in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, he talks about a thorn in the flesh. And he, pre he, pre he prayed three times to God about that. And um, God says, no, my grace is sufficient. Of course, in your weakness, my strength shows. So sometimes God's healing is not what we're asking for. So we, we struggle with God in those things. But it, but it does behoove us to cry out to God, to call out to God. Here's one of those situations in Matthew chapter uh, 26. Uh, they've left the upper room. This is the night that Jesus is going to be arrested. Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. This is in Matthew 26, verse 36. And he said, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Jesus began to be sorrowful, deeply distressed. Ah, this is what I'm facing here. I mean, you know, he's just got, you got stage four cancer. Uh, you just got divorce papers served to you. Uh, you were just told that uh, your, your, your child was in a terrible accident and they, they, they may not live. I mean, he is sorrowful and he's greatly distressed. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful to death. Stay here and watch with me, he says to the three. He went a little further, fell on his face. My father, is it possible? Let this cup pass. Is it possible? Nevertheless, your will. He came back to the disciples, and what are they doing? They're sleeping. He says to Peter, what? Could you not pray with me? Could you not help me? Could you not support me for an hour? Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. The spirit is willing. I know the flesh is weak. And boy, there's a challenge for us, isn't it? Again, the second time, he went away up there. They're here. Most of the disciples are down here. The three are in the middle. He's up to the top end of this uh, olive place with an, with an olive press in it, and he's up at the top end a second time. He prayed, oh, Father, is there any other way this cup passed? I, I, that, that, do I have to drink it, the cup of his wrath? Your will be done. He came back, found him asleep, eyes were heavy. He left that one away, prayed the third time, saying the same words. And then he says, you know, you're praying and, and resting. Behold, the hour is at hand. In uh, Luke, it says that an angel came and strengthened him after that third prayer. So again, there's no problem with running to God, coming to God, pouring out to God. Your pain, your agony, your no, please uh, rescue, please help, please intervene here. But but again, not my will, not my will, not my will, said Jesus, your will be done. Because listen, God is good and God can take even what we think is a really big negative, like Jesus on the cross or uh, Joseph in jail or whatever. And God can turn those into wonderful, wonderful things. So, you know, part of my my art, my thing is just to telling you God's story. So we're going to talk about um, uh, Joseph in, back in Genesis chapter 37. Because we need to be reminded that, yeah, you may be in a very dark place. You may be in a very difficult place. You may be in a very distressful place. You may be in a, uh, a very uh, uh, deep place. But God can get you through that. So that, that's why I would tell these stories. So here's this story about Joseph. Chapter 37. Joseph has a dream. He sees 12 shocks of, uh, of grain bowing before him. Uh, he tells his dad that, tells his brothers, and pff, dumb kid. And then he has another dream, and he sees stars bowing before him, plus the sun and the moon. Mom and dad bowing before him. Oh, my goodness. You know, who does this kid think he is? Well, then... The dad gives him a favored coat. I mean, because he is the firstborn son of the favored wife. There are four wives. The favored wife is Rachel. He's the firstborn. The other son born to Rachel is Benjamin. He, Rachel dies giving birth to Benjamin. But Joseph is the favored son of the, of the favored wife. So he gets a coat of many colors. Well, the brothers are, are angry over this. Who do you think you are? And so he goes up to see his brothers who are up north of the, uh, you know, a few days' journey taking care of the, of the herds and all. And Joseph comes 
and here comes that dreamer, here comes that arrogant kid, and here comes that he thinks people are going to bow down to him. Listen, God gave him that dream. He didn't make that up. That's from God, but of course they, they're blaming him. So they sell him into slavery. It says in Psalms as they're, put, as they're taking him away that he's crying in pain because they have bound him so tight. Well, he goes down. He becomes a slave in Potiphar's house. He's a faithful slave. Uh, Mrs. Potiphar puts a move on him. He resists that. She accuses him of attacking her. He winds up in prison. Age 17. He's in prison for uh, 15, or excuse me, he's in prison for uh, 11 years. And then the butler and the baker get thrown in. You know, that whole story of... Uh, uh, he interprets their dreams, and the, the, the baker's killed, and the butler's restored back to a pharaoh. And Joseph said, please tell the pharaoh about me that I'm innocent and I, I don't deserve being here. Well, and the, the butler says, yeah, I'll tell. Well, he forgets until pharaoh has dreams. Remember the fat cows and the fat corn and that whole dream? And all of a sudden, the butler says, well, wait a minute, I know a guy. I know a guy. He's in prison. So they fix old Joseph up. He comes before the Pharaoh, tells Pharaoh what to do, interprets the dream, tells Pharaoh what to do. And so it makes him number two. And so the famine comes, and the second year of the famine, the brothers come down, uh, ten brothers come down, and Joseph gives them uh, food, but he keeps uh, Simeon, puts him in prison, because he's probably the instigator. And he says, you cannot come back unless you bring your youngest brother, Benjamin, back. And they go back and tell Jacob, and they get starving, they're really hungry, and they say, we can't go back without Benjamin. And Judah says, I'll I'll stand up for him if if, there's, if they're going to take Benjamin. I'll, I'll, I'll take his place. Um, they go back down, and you know the whole story. And ultimately, they move the whole family down. Uh, and then uh, and and then Joseph, um, after ben, after Judah dies, or excuse me, after um, uh, Jacob dies, then the brothers will, now now he's in power. Our brother that we did ill to, he'll kill us now. And so he brings him in, and you know the, the very famous verse in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. That's a, that's a tremendous verse. Okay, so let's back this thing up. So here's, here's Joseph just cruising along, and all of a sudden, he's sold into slavery. He's done nothing wrong. He is, he's just said, here's what God has told me. My dad has blessed me, but, you know, who am I? I mean, I, I didn't go begging for this kind of stuff. But he's, he's sold into slavery. He is he is mistreated by the the barrels, uh, by the Potiphar's uh, the, the the commander's wife. He winds up in prison. Uh, he's he's mistreated by the butler who said I'll tell and he doesn't tell. So he spends 13 years of his life in prison, from age 17 to 30, prime years. He spends in prison. You know how many mornings does he get up? How many times does he Lord Lord please, what, what, what am I doing here? I mean prison. Prison back then is not like prison here. I mean, you go over to prison in Lincoln, I mean, you get Danish rolls and you have computers and you have a, a library and you have exercise machines and, and you can do virtually anything you want in prison. You can even do drugs in prison here. Those prisons were dungeons and holes and rats and wet and bad food. And, I mean, you would scrape the green off of it and you get uh, you get a soup of water with a few carrots in it. You know, my goodness, it's horrible existence. Joseph, for 13 years, gets that. What did he do? Nothing wrong. But yet God is up to something, right? And so when those brothers come back, you know, uh, they, they're rescued from, from um, um, famine. And not only are they rescued from famine, they're put in Goshen, which is a very fertile place. So the very thing, here's the guys that went after him and attacked him and did evil against him. And God turned that out to their salvation. It was their salvation. As bad as they were and as hard as it was on Joseph, yet it turned out to be their salvation. Again, hope in God. That God, your situation, maybe you may feel like you're in jail. You've been there for 13 years and, and you don't see a way out. God is not indifferent and God is able. So take hope and take help from this story that God can, can is there and God can bail you whenever. And, and it may be a quick bailout as it was with Joseph. All of a sudden, boom, he's in front of the Pharaoh. And all of a sudden, he's number two guy in the kingdom. Or it could be a slow process. But take hope in this story and in God. Because your situation is not unknown to him and it's not be beyond his grasp of fixing and, and caring or changing your attitude and changing just your your philosophy of what's going on in your life. So may God uh, come beside you and help you. So cast your care on him. He cares.
for you. Father, help each and every one of these that are struggling, that are addicted, that are challenged, that are overwhelmed. Father, to find hope in your word and in this story. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. Till the next time.